Welcome back to How To Craft Fair. This is episode number 18 in the Craft Fair Booth Review Series, where I take a look at a real Craft Fair booth submitted by one of my subscribers, and I'm going to break this review down into 10 different segments. I'll point out things that they're doing well and should continue to do, and then also identify some areas where there's room for improvement. Along the way, keep your Craft Fair booth in mind so that you can apply these tips to your setup to take that to the next level. So without further ado, let's go ahead and just jump right in. Okay, and so for today's episode, we're going to be reviewing Zilla's booth, and her business is Orange Moon Creations, and she's based out of Toronto, Canada. Uh, she makes handmade polymer clay earrings, and she has a pretty established Etsy presence, and the booth that we're going to be looking at today is a six-foot table spot, which was her very first event, okay? So can't remember if we've had a very first booth in the booth review series or not. Pages of Magic, I think they were maybe like two or three shows in, but that might have been like the newest vendor. So yeah, pretty excited to look at a first time vendor. And I got to say for being, you know, the first show out, Zilla's done a pretty good job. You know, booth looks, booth looks pretty good for a first timer. So excited to jump in and she wants advice on her branding, okay? So incorporating without it being too busy. So just a little injection of the branding. And then she like advice on a checkout area. And then also expanding to an outdoor booth, which is typically a 10 by 10, okay? So um, that's kind of a common thing. You know, um, some vendors start off indoors with these, you know, six, for, six or eight foot tables. And then eventually they'll, they'll expand out to a 10 by 10 booth. So that's one of the challenges that we'll be addressing today. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so here's a look at the booth. Again, Orange Moon Creations, first time vendor. Booth looks pretty good. The colors are pretty uh, tame, neutral, and there's just an overall nice look to the booth. So we're going to go ahead and get started with displays. Okay, so as I mentioned before, we are dealing with handmade polymer clay earrings throughout the entire booth, all right? So that makes it a little bit easier to display when you have one type of item, okay? Doesn't mean you, you only have to stick to one display, but just the fact that you don't have to try to accommodate different sizes of items and all these different shapes, it lets you be in more control with the displays because you kind of know what you're working with. As we work our way from left to right, we have um, a board here that contains 16 cards. Okay, so you can fit a pretty good amount on here. Get some decent height up off the table, so that's always good. Neutral color with the backing of the display board. And then she has a couple of crates over here. So one is stood up the, the tall way, so vertically basically. And then this wooden crate, it basically looks kind of like a square shape. I'm not sure if that's a rectangle and it's kind of like going deep. But regardless, you know, she's got it stacked in a couple of different ways so that it creates a little bit of, um, you know, of a whimsical, interesting look to those displays. Okay, and then she's utilizing the top. She has, it looks like one set of earrings on like this T display. But then I also want to point out the fact that the, the mirror is very prominent at the booth. And with an item like this, items that you can wear or jewelry, uh, fashion, those are the types of booths where you definitely want to be incorporating a mirror somewhere into your display. And you don't want to lay a mirror down on the table and you don't want it to be like a handheld mirror. The reason why is because you want the mirror to be high. When you look up, I guarantee you that you look a lot better when you're looking up at something as opposed to when you're looking down. Okay, have you ever done this? Have you ever have you ever pulled out your phone to take like a selfie or something like that and you're like looking down at your phone and how frightening that is? Let me go ahead and show you. Okay, so the left side is an absolute joke. Many chins, several chins. There is a giant divot somewhere in between some of the chins. 
and I don't exactly know where my neck stops and my body starts. Okay, so a lot of issues when you look down at a mirror or your phone. On the right side, just by looking up, I've reduced it all the way down to just two chins. Okay, so this is definitely why you wanna have the mirror higher up at the booth. So good job with that. As we continue working our way down, we have the marketing sign, all right? So not really display, so we'll touch on that later. Underneath the marketing sign, there is a small table riser with two levels. All right, so you can see it here. It's, it's kind of a lighter wood color, so it's a little bit tricky to see. I'll zoom in a little bit so we can see it better. All right, here we go. So again, two levels, and that's providing a little bit of character and uh, functionality as well. And then in front of that, there's basically like a tray, and that just contains more. All right, so they're just set out a little bit differently on the tray. And as I've touched on in the past, whenever you like lay something down on the table, sometimes I'll, I'll be honest, most of the time it's not ideal, okay? But when you have a staggered setup where you have like basically your first level is on the table and then you have behind it, you're starting to go up and go vertical, that's a different story, okay? So that pretty much negates the, I don't wanna say penalty or black mark, or whatever you wanna call it, but it offsets any kind of like negative aspect of putting something down on the table when you have things staggered and stacked up behind it, okay? So good job here, I like the middle section of the table. I'll zoom back out just a touch. Okay, and then we come over here with basically a smaller version of these tabletop displays. All right, so there's only six sets of earrings on here. Same color, kind of like that cream color, not quite, you know, white because you can see the you can see the cards of the earrings are white. So this is more like more like a cream, uh, more of a neutral color. And then we have the bigger version, which is essentially a twin of this side. It might be slightly smaller. You can see the cards here are a little bit more like tighter as they are, um, as opposed to how they look over here. Okay, so over here, there's a little bit more breathing room between each card. And then here, they're a lot more snug. I don't think... I don't think it looks bad or anything. Um, probably would prefer the bigger one just to have a little bit of a gap, but it's not by any means any kind of a disaster, okay? And then finally down over here, we have, again, similar to what you've done over here with the tray, except it's a, a different type of tray. This one looks like an oval, has some ridges on the side, and the same thing is kind of happening over here just on a smaller scale there's these little plates and they're kind of like um like a brushed gold looking color and all three of these actually kind of have a similar color where it's that uh kind of like a brushed metallic look to them so overall i would say that you're doing a pretty good job with your displays again i mean especially for first booth this is way way ahead of the pack basically compared to where most people are for their for their first booth so i have to give you you know kudos for that i do like that the displays kind of tie into one another so like the color for example of these three backing boards are kind of like that similar cream color then you have the two matching wooden crates this wooden piece, it's fine that it's by itself and it doesn't really tie into anything because, first of all, a lot of the display is hidden just by the nature of the items, okay? So you can barely even see the display and the focus is on the items, which is a really, really good, I'm not going to say problem to have, but it's a really, really good thing, okay? You always want the displays just to support the items and the items should be what is catching the eye of the shoppers you don't want it the other way around you don't want to have really really cool displays that are catching the eye of the people and then the items are kind of underwhelming right so again you've got that going in your favor so displays i think you're doing pretty good uh areas of improvements i have suggested this in a lot of videos lately right on the inside of your crates instead of having items on the inside of the crates you have your signage on the inside i would consider 
flipping this and reversing this. So for example, like this display right here, I would actually take this and tuck it right into this thing right here, this uh, vertical crate, and then get a little T light, um, like a battery operated light. And you know, that's the size of like a T light candle and you know, Velcro it or hot glue it or whatever you want to do to get it on the inside on the uh, top of this crate so that the light is shining down on it. We've been talking a lot about light in the booth reviews lately and especially on the inside of the crates. And I think it's especially as we kind of work our way towards like these fall events and, you know, fall and winter where you're going to be relying on artificial light more and more as the days get shorter, um, especially up in Canada, right? I mean, <laughs> winter comes probably pretty early. So what you want to do is have little things that you can do at your booth that are going to catch people's eye, you know, and be a little bit different. And not a lot of people are doing this light inside of the wooden crate thing. So this display is basically like a perfect size to sneak in here, you know, and it would leave you with about probably four or five inches worth of clearance height wise. And that would be great to have that light coming down on a set of six ear uh, earrings. So that would be one thing that you could do is take the signage, like you got your payment sign right here, you've got your marketing and informational sign, take those, put them out, and then put items in there and then have a light so that there's basically an eye-catching magnet moment for shoppers, okay? Just another way that you're kind of drawing them in and another way that you're being a little bit different from other vendors too to set you apart. Now, as far as your displays go on the six foot table, I think that's about it. I think you're doing a really good job. You know, I would do the swap out with your signage and then put the items in. So there's that one change or improvement or whatever that you can make. I like the colors of your displays. I like the wood being natural, so not painted. Um, yeah, that's, that's really about it. Now, one thing I wanna mention though, with your booth as it is currently on the six foot table is that your business name is Orange Moon Creations. I would start to inject some orange into the booth. Now that can take place on your displays, on your signage, maybe on your table runner, uh, your, your banner, if you get like a banner at some point, I mean, especially like a six foot table, it's kind of hard to have a banner, but as you graduate to a 10 by 10 outdoor booth, I'm sure you'll eventually have a banner. So these are things that you want to think of. One thing that you could even do is just actually have the lettering be orange or even part of the lettering be orange. I know that you wrote it in chalk in orange, but that's something that you could start to introduce into the booth a little bit more to kind of just establish that theme, whether it be on the displays or another method. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on to pricing. So the pricing method that's utilized at the booth is grouped pricing. So as we start to look from left to right, there are a few different zones with different prices. So these earring sets over here are $35 or two for 60. Good job of incorporating your bundle pricing into your standard pricing signs. I like it when it's done this way because it's covered all on one sign, okay? Sometimes people will have bundle pricing available at their booth, like, you know, you get the discount when you buy more than one item, but sometimes those signs like those informational signs about the bundle pricing are separate from the pricing so that can be a little bit confusing because people see one price in one location and then they kind of see like a different price in another location that can be a little bit confusing so there is another area over here where these are three for ten and then these items twenty dollars each or two for thirty it's a pretty good discount and then fifteen dollars each and let me zoom in. Okay, these don't have a bundle. Okay, so these are just $15 each for this stand. So this area right here, $20 each or two for 30. And these ones appear to be two for 15 or I can't make it out. And then $35 or two for 60. So that kind of matches the other end, like that uh, left side of the booth. So 
I think you're doing a really good job. Uh, the pricing is very clear. Your discount and bundle deals are very clear, easy to understand. I like the, I really, really like the black price tags with, it looks like a gold pen. If that's orange, if it's just the, like sometimes the pictures don't really like depict like the true color. If that was orange, extra kudos. And if it's not orange, definitely consider it because like, you know, bright orange, of course, shows up really well against black. And of course, that would just double dip into your theme. But the contrast is fantastic on them. You can see them from quite a quite a ways back. So that's going to be good, especially, again, as you get into that 10 by 10 booth. It's always good to just have those prices be big and um, very obvious to see because people will be stepped back a little bit further than they will with the six foot table. A single six foot table, people are going to be walking like right up to this thing and they're going to be standing basically like right against it. So with a 10 foot by 10 foot booth, there's just so much more space in there for people to be a little bit further away from, from things. So just think about this when you're doing your pricing signage. One thing that you can do to make it like a little bit more legible from a distance is to ditch the sense on each of these pricing signs, okay? So you don't have any items at your booth that are just for example like 3550 or 3575 it's all even dollar amounts okay so the sense portion of the pricing like when you're writing it out is unnecessary and it's just it kind of slightly clutters the sign a little bit and again you know, you want as much real estate on the sign as possible to write the numbers as big as you can, okay? So what you don't need, don't include. So I would ditch the cents on every one of your every one of your pricing signs, and that's just gonna make it a little bit more legible, you know, like the further that you step back as a shopper, okay? But yeah, the way that it looks, I think is really, really well done. Again, you know, I'm going to say this a few times during the review, you guys, and you know, first time vendor, this, this looks pretty good. This looks pretty, pretty good. So kudos to you. Just keep it up. And again, keep those slight modifications in mind when you expand out to that 10 by 10, just to make it more legible for the people. All right, so let's go ahead and dive into signage. Now we just, you know, we kind of touched on these a little bit earlier, but We'll dive in a little bit further now. So the first thing I want to talk about is this sign right here, the handmade polymer clay earrings. I really like the message that you decided to put on here, okay? Because it covers it covers a few different elements, really. It says, okay, the booth is going to consist of earrings. So if you didn't already get that when you were approaching it, here's you know some more confirmation that yes this booth is going to be earrings i like that you included the polymer clay because whenever you're able to give a little bit more insight on the items people are going to get a little bit more invested in those items when they know what it's made from or how it was made things like that it's just going to help to establish a little bit more of a connection between the shopper and your items and then finally the handmade portion is a very nice touch because even if people were to look at the booth and be like okay these are you know nice handmade items it's always good to just hammer that home that you know you crafted these you know you were the artisan that physically made these items so it just hammers home that point that you put effort into these items and you know you're showcasing something that you stand behind okay so this sign with what you decided to put on here i love it on all three levels okay we talked about the color of the letters is orange available i don't know you know i don't know if they make orange with these with these kind of uh letter boards but that would be pretty cool if not it's okay what i would do is just kind of uh, clean it up just a touch and I would just center everything so take the time to like center these letters so that it's nice and neat you know right down the middle okay because you know we're kind of like on the left hand side for hand uh, handmade polymer and then earrings and then clay is kind of in the middle so it just looks a little bit I don't want to say thrown together you know what I mean but it could could just be like a touch neater you know so that's one thing that you could do to take that sign like one level up 
as we come up to the top, we see your accepted payment method sign. And again, touched on this earlier, but I would like both of these signs kind of like down somewhere on the booth. And then that frees up the wooden crates for items. All right. But the sign itself, I do enjoy it. it it's informative, but it has a green border. Okay. It's kind of like a green and mm, like a bronze or a copper looking color looks like. I think there's a big opportunity with this sign because it can really look however you want it to look. It can have whatever colors you want it to have. It can have whatever shape you want it to have. And, you know, your booth is orange moon. So I would like to see something at the booth that is moon shaped, kind of that crescent shape, right? Or even, even a circle, even a circle would be okay because that kind of starts to toss the hint at moon right but this could probably be switched out to something that's orange so right now it's kind of like that green and that copper or bronze color there's an opportunity right there to make that tie into the theme a little bit better and then finally down here you have a qr code sign but it's in a picture frame you got the qr code and i believe down here there are three social media logos Okay, so I think one of them is Instagram and maybe a TikTok or something. But there's three uh, social media icons here. I think this sign could be a little bit put together a little bit better where maybe the icons are a little bit bigger and like across the bottom. So you have like one in one corner, one in another corner, and one in the middle. And then that way it looks a little bit more uniform instead of just kind of stacked on the left-hand side. And then maybe on the top, you could put something that says like, follow me on social media or just even follow me. Um, that would go a little bit, that would help to kind of just make this feel a little bit more complete. Okay, so again, I think you have like a nice start going on signage. And as you expand out to the bigger booth, I think what you are already doing at the smaller booth can be applied to that pretty, pretty easily, you know. So we've only talked about a couple of little tweaks here and there, just incorporating the orange, kind of stacking the font so it's centered a little bit better. But uh, that's about it, you know, and kind of touching up this one so it's a little bit more complete as a, as a social media draw sign. So, again, good job. You got a great start going, and now we can take that next step further. All right, so let's dive into marketing. So there's pretty decent marketing at the booth. First of all, she's got basically a two-in-one marketing sign. So it says orangemooncreations.ca, right? So... It's covering the social and online aspect, but then clearly when you read this, you can understand that the business name is Orange Moon Creations, all right? So that's kind of nice. One thing that you can do is to, just for really quick legibility purposes, you could make the M and the C capitalized. And when people type this in online, it doesn't matter if stuff is capitalized or not, like it's going to link up to it anyways, right? So just for reading purposes, you know, you might want to have that M and that C a little bit bigger just so that that business name is recognizable instantly if you didn't already get it, you know, from saying Orange Moon Creations, all right? So I know that a lot of this seems, trust me, a lot of this seems very obvious where it's like, well, duh, of course it says, you know, Orange Moon Creations, but like, I don't, I don't ever want to say like you have to dumb it down for people, but you just want to make it as simple as possible. You want to make it just overly obvious, overly obvious, okay? And I think that's just going to do you favors when, when you kind of approach it that way. Um, just assume that <laughs> nobody knows what the business name is or, again, even the fact that you have earrings on here, right? So it's like... Um, you know, the fact that you took the time to put this sign together is a good indicator that you have that thought process where it's like, you know, even even though people can probably understand that these are handmade and, you know, maybe some people even have an eye for this where they can tell it's polymer clay earrings. I'm going to put it out there, you know, and make it like a badge for the booth, basically. So just treat all your signage like that all the way across the board, and that's just gonna help you out. So other marketing tips as, again, as we start to think about this booth expanding is a table runner, okay? So 
I would first probably invest in a table runner as like your next big marketing purchase. And I would have the runner going this way. Okay, so if I could kind of draw like about where it would be. So kind of like here. So maybe it's like uh, two feet wide, maybe 24 inches, something like that, about two feet wide. And then have it hanging down and draping down the front of the booth and then incorporate your business logo here. Generally, what people will do on their banners and their runners is they'll have like a minimum of three elements. So if you have a graphic logo, like an actual emblem, that should be quite a bit of the space. And then maybe above it or below it or around it, however you want to do it, you could have your business name. So that's where you'd have Orange Moon Creations. And then finally, you should either have one way for people to contact you, which if you take this sign and you keep it going into your booth, I would not also incorporate it into your runner, okay? Because the real estate and the space on your runner is very valuable because you've only got you know a couple of feet to work with, right? So you've already got the logo, you've already got the script, the lettering of your logo. Then if you have this covered someplace else, then what I would put on the runner is handmade polymer clay earrings, okay? That's what I would put on there and just hammer that home. So that is probably the first big marketing step that I would take, not only just for the six foot table, but also as you start to think about expanding out for the 10 by 10 booth, then you're definitely gonna wanna have a nice runner, okay, at, at one of your tables. Now it looks like you have some business cards right here. It looks like there's a stack of business cards. I would go ahead and get some sort of a business card holder so that they're not just laying down on the table. The reason why is because if you go to outdoor events, you're gonna wanna have them in some kind of a uh, card holder so that it makes it less likely for them to just fly off your table because I guarantee those will, you know? So um, that's just something that you're gonna have to likely invest in at some point anyways. And you know, you might as well go ahead and do it for your six foot table setup as well. That again is an opportunity to have a splash of orange. So there's business card holders in all sorts of shapes, sizes, colors, all that stuff. Think about that as a possibility. Okay. Now, one thing that Zilla wanted me to talk about is her logo in itself. She was a little bit unsure of her logo. Now I'm going to show you her Etsy page and her Etsy page has a banner on top with her logo on it. And I don't know, I happen to think that it actually looks pretty good. Um, there are a little, there, there's a few elements that you could probably improve on it a little bit. Like there's kind of a crescent outline shape, like a crescent shape, but it almost looks like a sun because it almost kind of looks like sun rays, you know what I mean? Kind of shooting off. So is there a way that you could maybe have the script orange? So maybe, maybe the, maybe the card itself should be a dark card. Okay. Because look how this looks right here. For example, she has kind of like the black chalkboard and then the orange chalk and that contrast is really good okay the they're very very light and bright against the dark background maybe you could kind of replicate that on your business cards where you have a black background then you have the same kind of crescent shape happening except it's with a moon and that is wrapping around a font that is orange and it says orange moon creations okay so maybe that's what i would do with your logo is you know ditch the the line look where it kind of looks like sun rays turn that into a crescent moon shape and then have a dark dark background on those business cards with orange lettering and i think that would look really really sharp so that's about it for you know my suggestion for the marketing and your logo and all that i think you're really close and i like the shape and design of it but it just needs to kind of tie in with the name of the business a little bit better Okay, so now let's talk about vertical space. And vertical space at the six foot table is pretty good. There's not a whole lot more that you can do. Maybe you could have two more wood crates. That would be kind of nice. So if you really wanted to have the signage inside of the crates, because it's kind of like a cozy, nice homey look for the signs, which it is, 
maybe then I would double up on the wooden crates. So I would have two here where you have them and then probably two here and then kind of have them on each side of like this center section here. Your table overall is slightly like shifted to the right so like this center piece is a little bit to the right of center it feels like feels like there's more space on this side than there is on this side so what i would do is just kind of get that nice and centered right in the middle so it's like a nice focal point you know and then have the stacked crates on one side have this nice display over here and then repeat the stacked crates and then uh the sign over here then you'd have like really nice symmetry be kind of be kind of like pleasing you know what i mean just uh that that symmetrical look would be kind of cool and then also by having this right in the center it would still give you plenty of room in the middle there to stand behind your table and have a good presence with the shoppers okay you always want to be you always want to be um instantly identifiable as the vendor when shoppers walk in okay so the shoppers want to see the vendor and make eye, eye contact with them and all that and that would allow you to do that still even with two more crates on the table but yeah as far as like your vertical space goes i don't really have a whole lot to say again i really dig the fact that the mirror is up on the top i think that's really really smart and height wise i think you're doing fine just fine with your displays and there's really not a whole ton of opportunities besides what you've done thinking ahead to the 10 by 10 outdoor booth basically i think you're on the right track and you would just expand your booth out doing the things that you're doing okay so i would have at least two tables so your table setup is really nice so i would go ahead and just have a second one underneath the tent and then what you can probably do is have some sort of taller display whether it's like a stand or i don't know um some people have like wire racks as a display but with things like earrings you might just be better off having these individual setups where the number of earrings on each display is kind of controlled okay it's not something that's totally outrageous but yeah overall doing good and this will just kind of expand out further once you get to that 10 by 10. all right so let's dive into colors contrast and texture so there's definitely some good elements with this particular segment of the review okay i think first of all contrast is good so let's take a look at the earrings and these backing cards all of these items right here, just about every single one of them is like this really deep blue, kind of like navy color. Over here, we have a lot more vibrant colors. So there's a lot of summertime, spring, exciting colors happening over here. And then in the middle, we have a little bit of a mixed bag. So down on the bottom, it's kind of almost like pastels. And then here you have a lot of really dark colors. Down on the table, this sort of matches what we saw on the right side, where it's like these vibrant almost fluorescent colors and then finally over here this almost looks like a spring collection where you know you have like your mint green like your lavender so as we look at all of these earrings there's very very few that don't pop well against the white backing cards so i would stick with the white backing cards okay and while we're talking about those i did forget to mention this during marketing one thing that you should definitely consider doing, Zilla, is to put your logo maybe on like the bottom right-hand corner of each of these backing cards, okay? So maybe on the top right would be good too because that's kind of uninterrupted. So some of these earrings hang down and that would cover the bottom right. So maybe on the top right, top left, something like that where your logo is stamped on these earring cards and that would again help to further establish your marketing okay back to colors contrast and texture as i mentioned the backing cards being white is good okay so i again there's not a whole lot of earrings that get a little bit lost against the white maybe this light purple right here and right here they don't pop as well but white out of all these is clearly the best pick okay because 
any other color and I think it would start to clash with the earrings. So good job with that. I like the color with that. Now your table runner, your table runner and your tablecloth is a very, very similar color and you typically don't see this. So we kind of have like a tan against a beige or a beige against a tan or whatever. And ideally you'd like to see a little bit more contrast there. The placement of the runner is also maybe not ideal, okay? So you kind of have like the runner pulled all the way up to the front and then you can see a lot of just blank tablecloth on the back. So I would probably slide this over about mm, six inches and then that way you have maybe about a six inch table portion here and then a six inch table portion on the back and the runner is more centered on the table going this way okay but as far as a color as far as a color for what your runner could be as opposed to the tablecloth black might be good a black runner might be good because you'd still have like that warm inviting beige color that's kind of like homey and cozy and inviting but then you'd have black, which would contrast some of the items pretty well, particularly these gold like platters and plates. The black would look fantastic with those. So just something to consider, especially if you're still going to have a couple of things laid down on the table because those earring cards are white. OK, and then these displays are kind of a cream color that would go really good against black. So. Maybe just a black runner would look good. And especially because of the fact that you already have black incorporated in a couple of things like your signage, especially, okay, it would start to kind of just tie in that theme as well. So you'd kind of have your three colors basically would start to develop into black, which is already somewhat established, orange, which is in the business name, and then kind of like the natural tan beige color. And I think all three of those would go together quite well. Now textures, textures, I want to take a moment to give you some kudos for texture. There's no kind of pattern clashing or anything like that. That is definitely a nice element of this booth is that it's not visually distracting. There's no checker patterns. There's no plaids or stripes or anything like that that would really distract you away from the earrings. So I definitely wanted to give you a shout out and kudos on that because that was definitely a good decision at your booth. Okay, so now let's talk about the strength of the theme, which I think you're absolutely nailing it. You're not going outside of your lane, your zone, basically, and you don't have anything random at the booth that doesn't really make sense or fit in with anything else. So the strength of your theme is absolutely fantastic. I do like, again, another shout out to the sign that you're basically backing up the products themselves. Okay, so you look at the products, you're like, oh, these are earrings. Then your signage is just reaffirming that. And that's one of the things that you can do at your booth to hammer home the strength of the theme. So again, as you expand out to the 10 by 10, that's definitely something that you want to keep carrying through to that booth as well. So yeah, strength of theme, there really isn't a whole lot to talk about just because this is one of those things where you're doing a really, really good job of and you're keeping it consistent and predictable for the shoppers, okay? So again, good job here. All right, now let's dive into accessibility. So when we talk about accessibility, I refer to a couple of things. So one is safety. Uh, are, are shoppers able to get in and out of the booth safely are there any kind of tripping hazards are there any displays that are going to fall over and then another portion of accessibility to think about is how close does somebody have to be to your booth your table in order for them to see the items and see the prices so that's another element of accessibility that i talk about so let's cover the first portion first now we only have one picture of the booth all right let me zoom out as much as i can that's it. Okay. So that's as far as it zooms out. So we can't really see what's going on in front of the booth, but she has a stretched tablecloth cover. Okay. So there's not going to be anything like laying or sticking out from these types of covers because they come all the way down to the ground and basically something can't be poking out of them. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and assume that people can approach the table and that it's, it's all good. There's no tripping hazards. Doesn't look like there's 
electricity being utilized at the booth. So that's another thing I try to look at is are there any cords running through because that can be a tripping hazard as well because there's no electricity and because we can't see the floor. I think, you know, everything is good here as well. So I don't think there's any kind of issues with that displays falling over. There's a couple things stacked, you know, so we have basically three tiers here and the first tier is set up vertically. Okay. So this is fine inside. Okay. But if you do this outside, I would just be kind of careful. Okay. Maybe what you could do is put something that weighs a decent amount on the first level. And then that way it kind of establishes like a somewhat solid base. Another thing that you could do if you were really worried, like just for instance, the neighbor over here has like kind of like a three tiered thing and it gets, it gets kind of high and it's not super wide at the bottom. So this could be a little bit tipsy, you know, one thing that you could do is if you have a, a wooden crate like this, they make these things where they're like clamps, they're like table clamps. And a lot of times woodworkers will use these when they're gluing two pieces of wood together. If you're super concerned, you could bring a couple of clamps with you to events kind of in your supply tote. And if it's a windy day and you're a little bit nervous about your stacked setup, you could at least secure the first level on your side of the table by clamping the table and then maybe getting the clamp through to a piece of wood. Okay. So, um, or another way that you could do it is on the back of your wood crate, you could have like a bracket and you know you could just kind of screw it into the back of the wood crate and then obviously you wouldn't screw it into the table but that would give you something to clamp down on if you're having trouble getting to something to, to clamp down on okay so there's a few different ways that you can do it those are just you know some ideas but generally that's only something that you have to think about when you are outside inside you're not gonna have to worry about that the only thing that you have to worry about is somebody bumping into the table which unfortunately that does happen but <laughs> there's not a whole lot that you can do about that so yeah i mean looks good if you were concerned about the mirror a simple fix for that is just velcro on one side of the crate and velcro on the bottom of the of the mirror you know so that's something that you could do but not really a concern. Uh, I don't. I don't see any concerns. This is more so just tips as you go outside, and the elements become a little bit more, you know, out of control. Okay, and then finally, the last portion of accessibility is one. One thing is the tidiness. So you're not really going to see it with a six foot table. Okay, this is more coming into play when you have a ten by ten booth, and tidiness and cleanliness really only comes to comes into play with those bigger booths because people are actually walking into those booths. Okay, so you kind of have to have things picked up. You can't have things laying around. I do see one water bottle right here. Not a big deal because generally for most people as they approach the table, that's gonna be hidden behind this display, okay? So that is pretty good use, um, pretty good job of hiding the water bottle. When you have these stretched tablecloths, I guess the one downfall is that unlike the loose tablecloth, so, you know, where you can just flip it up and have like a tote or a box or something. You don't really have a good hiding spot on your side, the vendor side of the table, because again, it's just stretched down to the bottom. Okay. So that is where, you know, you got to use your displays a little bit to help you out. And that way you can hide some stuff, keep it out of sight, and then you don't have to worry about getting underneath the table. Okay, so let's go ahead and just dive into general use of space. And for a six foot table, I think this is really good. You have quite a few designs that are out there. Could there be a little bit more? Yeah, sure. I mean, these these displays could be a little bit taller, but then, then it starts to get a little bit overwhelming for a six foot booth, okay? So with a six foot table, there's definitely a happy medium that you have to stay within. And I think this is this is just about really where you wanna be as far as how much stuff you're putting out. You have enough items out there to give people plenty of options, plenty of looks and variety, but then you're also maintaining breathability and spacing at the table. And that is extremely important, especially with a six foot table. Guys, when you have, when you have a 10 by 10 spot, you can, put a ton of stuff out there and it can still feel breathable okay but it is very very easy to make a six foot table look stuffed and 
smothered and crowded, okay? So maintaining your spacing between your displays, like here's some spacing here, right? A little bit of spacing here and a nice touch with the potted plant just to give it a little bit of a break between the items. And then over here, it's a little bit tight on this side, but we did talk about moving this center piece over to the left a little bit, and that then is gonna create a little bit of room here, okay? But overall, yeah, really, really good spacing. General use of space at the six foot table is absolutely fantastic. When you go to the 10, 10 foot by 10 foot outdoor booth, just start to build it out gradually. Try not to try not to get it to the point where it's like, okay, I'm gonna try to game plan how I'm gonna fill this thing to the max right off the bat. I would kind of just ease into it. So definitely introduce a second table and by you having two tables, that's gonna give you a lot of chances to display how you wanna display, okay? Because she explained to me in the email, one of the emails that one of the things that she does is like, she'll kind of have like a seasonal approach with some of the items. Like for example, like these could definitely be spring, right? It's like very colorful, springy. And then these are more so like, this could be year round, you know, any time of year. So maybe at the 10 foot by 10 foot uh, booth, she could have kind of like a consistent, safe table that's gonna be okay with items that are cool year round. And then she could kind of have another table that's dedicated to like what she feels is gonna be hot at that given time, okay? So that's one idea for when you expand out to the booth and really for any vendor as they're going into a 10 by 10 booth or expanding is that's one thing that you can do is think about the time of the year for the show and are you crafting any kind of items that are seasonal or make sense more so in that particular season and then you can kind of separate them and have like zones in your booth. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on to the eye test. And the eye test is basically the two or three seconds that somebody is walking by your booth. And what are you doing as a vendor to get them to stop and check out your stuff? So the eye test here is very, very good. Um, again, this, this does not look like a booth who has a vendor and it's their first time out, okay? It just, it doesn't look like that at all. I mean, this looks like a seasoned vendor already. So Right off the bat, that portion of the eye test is very good. It's very well put together. It's mature. I know that's kind of like a weird word to describe a booth, but it just looks, again, like a veteran vendor. Okay, so that's fantastic. As you start to build out your theme, I think that's going to help tremendously. So incorporating the logo and splashing in some orange, splashing in a crescent shape somehow, like the moon, these are the things that are really, really going to take it to the next level. Okay. So again, kind of just do the check mark and check boxes of everything that we touched on for how you can incorporate that. We talked about the table runner, um, your business cards. I, I noticed that they are white, right? So, I mean, that, that could be black, orange with the beige, this sign, you know, are you able to get the lettering to be orange? This sign right here, can you get something that has an orange border? The mirror. I wonder if there's I wonder if there's a way that you can have like a moon mirror. I mean, get get desperate. Look on Amazon, see if you can even find something used. Like that could be like something that's like super, super cool at the booth. Okay. So when you have a business name that incorporates colors or shapes. And in this case, we have both. You've basically given yourself a massive, massive opportunity to not only have good strength of theme at the booth, but I mean, you can create an immersive experience where it's like you've created like this environment and people walk in there and, and they're like, they're not even at a craft fair anymore. They're just at your booth and at your environment. So with your business name, the fact that we have a color and a shape and an object, like that really just presents a massive, massive opportunity for you. So I, I love your business name and I think it has huge, huge potential with a craft fair booth. So getting back to the eye test, kind of went off track there. That's that's pretty much par for the course for my reviews. <laughs> um, getting back to the eye test, Again, I think you're off to a fantastic start. I mean, just really, really great, great start for first-time vendor. 
keep doing what you're doing. You're making really good decisions. You have great ideas at the booth. And now it's basically just like game planning how to execute the theme. I think your items speak for themselves. The items look great. And I like the fact that you have seasonal looks combined with just more classic looks, I'll call it. Okay. That in itself is going to do you wonders and really present a lot of opportunities for shoppers. So all that stuff is good. Okay. For you, I think it's really just about pushing the gas pedal to the floor on your theme. So this was a really interesting review. Again, a first time vendor. This, I believe, was the first time on the channel. So that's kind of cool. Uh, great emails back and forth, by the way. So good communication. Really appreciate that. That definitely helped out with today's review and covering some things that you wanted to talk about. One thing I want to touch on that I really couldn't in any of these like categories is that she wanted to talk about a checkout area. Now, a checkout area is going to be basically impossible at a six foot booth. You just kind of have to like make do with the space that you have. But as you get into that 10 by 10 or that outdoor setup where you have a lot more room to work with, you're items are going to provide you with good breathing space in a 10 by 10. Like you'd have to have probably a thousand sets of earrings in a 10 by 10 in order for it to be stuffed to the point where you can't have a checkout area. Okay. So the nice thing about that is that you're going to have room to have a dedicated checkout area. And that is really nice for shoppers. What it would do is Maybe in the front of your booth somewhere, kind of like near where people are walking in, I would have some kind of baskets. And I think you mentioned that you might have baskets already for people, but have them out and very obvious for people to pick up. Again, maybe an opportunity for orange, right? But have those available. And then in the back of your booth is where you want the checkout area to be. You always want the checkout area to be like deep in the booth, okay? Because you want the people to see all the items first. They want to be drawn to the items. They don't want to see like first thing at the booth is the checkout area. Okay. So keep that in mind as well. When you start to expand out to that, some people do a podium. Some people do like a small table, maybe like a little four foot table. And I think that you mentioned that you actually like bought a four foot table. So that could be an ideal space for a checkout area. Now, when you start to build that out, you want to have nice little shopping bags and your booth is going to be great because you can just use like a small shopping bag, get something, get something that looks nice, have a paper bag with handles, like something cute, and then have your, again, marketing, have your logo on the bag. Two different ways that you can do this pretty easily. You can get a custom stamp made on Amazon. This is pretty reasonable, like 25, 35 bucks to get a custom stamp with your logo or your lettering. And you can stamp all those shopping bags, or you can just have like a giant roll of stickers made and just slap a sticker on every bag. Okay. So that is something that I would definitely incorporate at your booth. But that's pretty much about it for your shopping area. I mean, your shopping area. Um, your, your checkout area. And when you have your checkout area, this sign, you want that to be at that location. Okay. So you want the accepted payment methods at that checkout area. That's about it. Those are kind of like your basics. If you put a table, if you use a table for your checkout area, make sure that your table cloths kind of match and that your theme is carried through even to that table, even though it's not a display table, you don't want to have something looking totally out of place. Okay. I hope these tips helped. This was a really fun review. It was kind of a, a fun challenge. I hope again, that there was uh, something in here that you can use that all vendors can use. Be sure to check out Zilla's social media um, apps, pages, right? And check around on Etsy, okay? So anybody that has an Etsy shop and gets a, a booth review, I hope that you check them out on Etsy too because, um, you know, if you are if you got Christmas or birthdays coming up, it's always nice to shop from people that are making things and they're, they're, they're local vendors and things like that. So uh, keep these people in mind throughout the year and uh, as these uh, dates come up. So again, it was a pleasure to do this review. If you want to get your booth reviewed, 
check out my website where I have more information on that. Uh, there's kind of a fluctuating circumstance with my booth reviews. I, I need time to catch up on them. So sometimes I get backed up and I have to stop booth reviews so that I can make more and then I'll open it back up again. So just check out the website for more information. My website also has my Amazon links and it's a ton of links to items that will help you for your next craft fair. So be sure to check that out as well as a page for my Etsy shop. And that has downloadable printable resources that are going to help you for your next craft fair. I have craft fair checklist, email signup sheets, everything that you might want to need for a craft fair. It's printable and downloadable. So this was episode number 18 in the craft fair booth review series. To check out all the other videos in the playlist, check out the playlist above and thank you all so much for watching.